Hi everybody, it's Violet Kitty. And God has been speaking to me a great deal about something that I call convenient Christianity. You see, there are a lot of people who are Christian until the Spirit of God or the Word of God would call them to do something they don't want to do. Something outside of their comfort zone. Something they find inconvenient. A lot of people have bought into the happiness doctrine. God loves me, therefore God wants me to be happy. And that sounds well and good. But the problem with the happiness doctrine is that people in pursuing their happiness often harm others and they sin and they use the happiness doctrine as their justification for it and the reason it doesn't work is it says God loves me and wants me to be happy but because he wants me to be happy He's given me an okay to hurt you because God hates you and wants you to be miserable. That's why the happiness doctrine doesn't work. I've talked about it before and I stand beside it. God doesn't care about our happiness. He cares about our holiness. And your pursuit of happiness is not holy when it harms somebody else. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. God wants to pour out his blessings on you, but he wants you to seek him first. When we seek him first, he knows what we need to bring us happiness eternal joy that the circumstances of this world cannot take away. People say, well, God wants to give me the desires of my heart. And I agree. But they forget the proviso. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. It's really an if-then situation. If you delight yourself in the Lord. He will give you the desires of your heart. But first and foremost, He will change the desires of your heart to be that which He has planned for you. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans for hope and a future. But all of these depend upon obedience, holiness. My life verse is Romans 8:28. For we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And I do believe that means all of the painful things that happen to our life in our lives. But It says all things. So that says to me that God can work our sin for our betterment and His glory. Should we sin so grace can abound? Absolutely not. But when we do sin, if we respond with complete and utter obedience, He can use that sin and turn it around. He says, I challenge you, give me your sin, and I will turn it back into something that will bring you joy. I can redeem it, but I need your obedience. How many times have we heard of a marriage that was on the brink and one of the partners failed, but because one of those partners failed and still both responded righteously saying we are going to surrender completely to God in this situation 
that marriage came back stronger than it ever was because God used the obedience and brought about the betterment of his people and his glory you see that's what God wants to do he wants to say watch me turn this around and watch me bless you through it but in order to do so he demands our obedience all things work together he can even use our sin but it requires our humility and complete surrender to him for him to work it for the good of those who love God and that's all I have to say BK out